Dialogue systems are a huge part of modern games. Using them, game developers can convey the ideas of the player character and NPCs to the person playing the game. Despite the fact that dialogue systems can be a little bit different between games, most of them tend to have similar features, such as printed text and in some cases voice acting. Dialogue is crucial if you're going to have character interaction of any kind, and having a visual and sometimes auditory dialogue system helps show players what characters in the world are thinking and saying. In regard to character interaction, Fire Emblem Three Houses is one of my favorite games on the Nintendo Switch. Characters in the game feel unique and interesting and support their own personalities and goals. The game lets you build relationships with these characters, view special cutscenes that give you more insight into who they are, and even do things like celebrate their birthdays and hold tea parties with them. After spending so much time playing Fire Emblem Three Houses, I got the novel idea to try and recreate the game's dialogue system in Unity. I felt that doing so would not only get me practice with the engine, but also give me insight into how such a crucial game feature is designed. Alright, so to start things off, I took a look at all the components of Fire Emblem Three Houses' dialogue system. First off, there's the text box itself. There is a visible text box sprite that prints the dialogue as it is spoken. The dialogue is printed typewriter style, which is a very popular method of printing text in video games and is used quite often. Next up was the character portrait. This is a component of the dialogue system that Fire Emblem is famous for. In the right side of the text box, there is a 2D character portrait of whoever you're talking to. This portrait actually changes expression based on what the character is saying, which helps to convey emotions such as anger or shock. Next up is choices. During certain interactions, characters in the game will say something that prompts the player to make a choice. The option they select can lead to a branch in dialogue, causing a different response to be played, or increasing or decreasing affinity with the character being spoken to. Finally, voice acting. Fire Emblem Three Houses script is fully voiced, meaning that every character's lines were performed by a voice actor. The voice acting is synced up with the dialogue, and as the dialogue is being printed, it is also being audibly spoken. You're a hard guy to grasp, you know that, Claude? Oh, I disagree. I'd let you grasp me any day. This helps give each character more personality and also shows the amount of effort put into the game. For my Unity recreation, I abstracted all these features and decided to address them step by step. I started by following Blackthorn Prod's basic dialogue system tutorial, which I'll link in the description below. This gave me a basic typewriter style dialogue display to work with initially. After having the basic system set up, I made a few modifications. First of all, I knew that when the voice lines were spoken, the actors would pause after every punctuation. To address this, I modified the code for the part so that the typing would pause for a slightly longer amount of time if it detected a comma, period, question mark, or any other similar symbols. Once the dialogue was working, I created a quick text box sprite using a sprite. This sprite had a large space in the middle for the text, and also an area on the top right so I could add the character portraits later once I drew them. I loaded the text box into Unity and things were looking pretty good, but I knew the next thing I needed to do was account for the player choices. I decided to address this in a simple way. If a phrase in the dialogue array starts with an asterisk, that means it is meant to be a selectable option for the player. Fire Emblem Three Houses allows you to pick a multitude of responses, anywhere from 1 to 3, but to keep my engine simple, the player is always presented with two opposing options. When the parser detects an asterisk, it knows the current phrase and the very next one are supposed to be selectable options for the player. It will then call a separate function that I wrote, which loads these options into two buttons and displays them on the screen. Awesome! Now that we had the basic dialogue printing and selectable options working, it was time to get into the fun part. Characters. I struggled for a bit when considering how to find appealing character models to use in my demo, but I eventually settled on using Elusoft's free Kobold models. They made these models freely available on their website as they're using them in their own game production, Kobold Garden, so make sure to check that out as well. I'll leave a link in the description. Rather than get right into the nitty gritty of the models themselves, I drew 2D artwork based on the model design first. Just like in Fire Emblem, I gave these drawings multiple expressions that would correlate with what the character was saying. I loaded the artwork into Unity and used the masking feature of the UI so a cutaway display of the character art would show in the top corner of the text box. I made an array of the character expression artwork and made it equal size to the one with the dialogue sentences, ensuring that each expression correlated with the dialogue being spoken. Once that was completed, I loaded the model into Mixamo and downloaded some basic animations. For the main character Kobold, this included an idle animation as well as a running animation for when the player would be exploring the small 3D area I was going to create. After this, I started to work on a simple third person movement engine. This part actually took me surprisingly long, and I ran into multiple bugs along the way. I won't bore you with the details, but the important thing is that I eventually got the system up and functioning. Now it was time to make the NPCs. I created multiple copies of the same Kobold model and got a walking animation for them for Mixamo. I then gave them a boolean called walking NPC to determine what type of NPC they would be. If this boolean was marked true in an instance of the prefab, then it would walk back and forth. If not, the NPC would just stand in place. 
I got inspired for this because many of the NPCs in Garrick Mach Monastery behave the same way, walking throughout the school or just standing in one place and waiting for you to talk to them. In the NPC character script, I gave them an expressions and sentences array just like in the dialogue manager. However, I also gave them a voice lines array as I knew that that was the feature I was going to be implementing last. I wrote unique dialogue for each NPC instance so that they'd all have something different to say. Now I just needed a way for my player to actually start a conversation with each NPC. In my player script, I had them perform a ray cast whenever the X key was pressed. A ray cast was essentially a line shot out in space a set distance from the player's position. If the ray cast came into contact with the character controller of one of the NPCs, that means the player was close enough to initialize conversation with the NPC, and the player would call their dialogue starting function as a result. In this function, the player tells the dialogue manager script to begin a conversation, and essentially passes on all the data from the NPCs they started talking with to the dialogue manager itself. The dialogue manager then displays this dialogue with its accompanying character portraits and voice lines, as the data for all three was passed over. There's just one issue. None of the NPCs had voice lines yet. To remedy this, I contacted some friends and asked them to lend their talents in bringing my characters to life. My friends Bill and Allie both agreed to voice two of the characters in the demo. For the remaining characters, I asked my dad to lend his voice for one, and I used my own voice for the last. I had everybody send me a clip of their voice lines, which I then cleaned and chopped up in the free program Audacity. I loaded these lines into each respective NPC character, and voila! All the characters were voiced. Oh man, I'm so screwed! The last feature I needed to implement was sound effects for the text boxes. In Fire Emblem, a sound effect plays when dialogue starts, as well as every time you advance the conversation. I opened FL Studio and made a few simple sound effects. Then imported them to Unity and added the second audio controller to my dialogue manager to handle these sound effects separately from the voice acting. Upon adding this feature, the system was done, and this is what the final product looked like. Hey, did you hear the news? Apparently, a human was discovered in the kingdom. Pretty crazy, right? They say that humans have not walked these lands in a hundred years. I thought they were myth. You know what? Some drunkard in one of the kingdom's taverns must have been mistaken. There's just no way. You don't think humans are real either, right? What? Seriously? Regardless, I'm just excited to see how this plays out. This project took me quite a bit of time, but it was actually an absolute blast to work on. Um, I had a lot of fun trying to recreate this feature from Fire Emblem, and honestly seeing it just fully complete and functioning, it, I don't know, it, it's really something else, it just makes you feel really good. Um, I feel like in a full-fledged RPG, uh, this system, or maybe a derivative of it, could be really useful in providing dialogue throughout the entire game. Uh, if you want to try out the demo that I broke down in this video, I will have a link to my itch.io page in the description uh, where you can download it and play it for yourself. Uh, but other than that, thank you guys so much for tuning in and checking this out. Uh, this was my first time sort of doing a Unity game development behind the scenes video, uh, and I really enjoyed it. But if you have any thoughts, recommendations, uh, or requests, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you like this video, feel free to like it. And uh, if you're interested in seeing more from me, uh, you can always hit the subscribe button because I really do appreciate it. Uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for stopping by and tuning in, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.